afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. We are so happy to be with you guys on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. And just bless your heart. We prepare, obviously, we ask this, the Lord to lead us and guide us in a word for you guys. And we believe this is going to be a special word for you. But of course, we bre we're breaking up the summer. Those of you who don't know, we're breaking up yes. the summer. And Pastor has given us free reign <clears throat> with PDJ. And so uh, Joshua and I are with you over the summer. And we just pray that you're blessed when you leave this platform and you can go back and apply the word that, that God gives us for you guys. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right, we're going to jump right into the Word. So today we're going to read from the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 50, verses 16, 16 through, through 23. 23. Actually, do you want to go there first, baby? Because you're in the... Yeah. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, 16 through 22 and 23. And Josh was reading from the NLT version. And I'll share a few of my King New King James Version terms just to give you a different perspective. But go ahead, baby. 16 through 20. Okay. Yes. But God says to the wicked, Why bother reciting my decrees and pretending to obey my covenant? For you refuse my discipline and treat my words like trash. When you see thieves, thieves, you approve of them, and you spend your time with adulterers. Your mouth is filled with wickedness, and your tongue is full of lies. You sit around and slander your brother, your own mother's son. While you did all this, I remained silent, and you thought I didn't care. But now I... I, but now I will rebuke you, listing all my charges against you. Repent, all of you who forget me, or I will tear you apart, and no one will help you. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal you. I will reveal to you the salvation of God. Amen. Uh, the NLT is pretty clear. I like where it says. Where's the one that says about trash? Um. 17. 17. So his version says, For you refuse my discipline and treat my words like trash. My God. Like trash. Mine says, Seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. I mean, that's just us not valuing his word, his instruction in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, th this topic today is derived from a moment, a teaching moment that we had recently, and um, you have to seize the moment and let the Holy Spirit minister to you with any opportunity. The Holy Spirit is always speaking, wisdom is always speaking, whether you uh, reach into what God is trying to do and speak to your life, it's up to you, but we're choosing to use every opportunity to minister to us, and so this ministered to us recently, and Today we're naming our PDJ Code of Conduct. Code of Conduct. Um, if you caught verse 22 where Joshua read, I'll let you read your version, then I'll read my version. Repent 22? Mm-hmm. 23. Um, no, 22 and 23. Go ahead. Repent all of you who forget me or I will tear you apart. And no one will help you. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. Very good. My version says, Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct mm -hmm. a right who him, to him who orders his conduct correctly, properly, I will show the salvation of God. You know, Joshua and I were having a conversation about this yesterday and how um, we don't have to fall in the bucket of labeled as the wicked. We love God. Mm -hmm. We're serving God. We have been transformed by the power of his spirit. And we are not just labeled Christians, but we are walking Christians. We walk the walk, talk the talk to the best of our ability. But there are times when we violate the code of conduct. And we slander people. We slander or we walk like the wicked. Mm -hmm. We begin to behave like the wicked. And what points it out, the, what points it out here in verse 22 the most to us as we were dialoguing, verse 22 says, now consider this, you who forget God. 
Aren't there moments in our lives, Joshua, and those of you who are listening, where you have these little moments in life on a daily basis, once a week, two times a week, three times a week, whatever the, um, the frequency is, that you forget God? Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is not that you're not conscious of Him, that He's He's your salvation, but in you forget about his ways his and, ways and how we do our tra- how we do life and our transactions we have moments of forgetting god and what i mean by that is we have a a, a moment of we forget that he lives in us that the fruit of the spirit can be operating in us mm-hmm. because the spirit lives in us and we had a moment where we failed and we completely slandered somebody we completely did not operate in the fruits of the spirit we behaved like the wicked we completely disregarded god's mm-hmm. word in our lives yeah. god's working his manifest spirit in us and we forget god it's so natural sometimes to forget things, forgetting keys, forgetting uh, to turn off a curl and iron, forgetting to uh, whatever, forgetting something. But we also forget the ways of God, the op- the manifestation of God's working in us, even on a daily basis as human beings. Mm-hmm. We tend to lean towards the flesh and we forget God. And I mean, those verses to us minister to us, Joshua, right? Mm-hmm. Because... It, 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 verse 23 talks about our conduct. What does yours say again? 23. But giving things is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. Yeah, and in these verses, it talks about us when we slander and walk into wickedness. And if you look at some of verse 23, it says, If you keep to my path, to God's path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. And when we do forget about God, we're going on to our path. Yes. But when we go into God's path, that's where if we do mess up, we still have the salvation of God where we can repent. Yes. Yes, we can <clears throat> still. And we had we had a dialogue about this yesterday because here we have, I will show you the salvation of God. A lot of people think, you know, that moment that you got saved the moment that i decided i I invite you in jesus to be my lord and savior thank you for living on the inside of me i repent of my sins all that moment when you decide to give to god Mm -hmm. that is initial where where we are saved we have given our heart to him that is the salvation but you know when you think about it every single day we need his salvation not to rededicate god i just i give my heart to you and i just um well actually we can we can do that every single day (coughs) father i just repent of my ways but it's him saving us through his grace Mm -hmm. and mercy every single day through a reminder of his word through his spirit telling us hey you know what i'm trying to save you right now The Spirit is trying to minister to you right now, and I need you to yield to it. Mm -hmm. That is constantly God's saving grace in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. And if you look at verse 20, you sit around and slander your brother, your own mother's son. And if you don't know what slander means, slander means to defame or talk bad, and it's misrepresenting someone, and it damages another's reputation. Yeah. And... When you look at verse 20, this can actually be a whole thing of itself, but you sit around and slander your brother, which is like slandering, since we're all family and we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, it's like talking bad to your own friend and just um, damaging their reputation and defaming Mm -hmm. them. And... um. God is our father and it's like we're slandering our own brother basically and like it says in there yes like blood we're not actually family but yes we're all God's children and if you're wondering how this comes into the code of conduct well look at verse 20. Mm-hmm. And your own mother's son, which is like your father's child, 
that's when you're taking your own path mm -hmm. and you're not walking in the salvation of God. Come on. And when you're not walking in the salvation of God, you're running the red light. Like, if you look in 22, repent, all of you who forget me, or I will tear you apart and no one will help you. When you run a red light, you're not going to just stop and go back, right? No. no. So you're going to keep going. But when you keep going on your, your own hardships and your own path, taking the wrong direction to, to get to your destination, how are you going to walk in the salvation and the blessings and the goodness of God? Come on. When you're not even near Him. Yes. And... You're in a moment of forgetting Him. Uh-huh. And if you come into a hardship or moment where you need to stop forgetting God, which all of us need to stop forgetting God, but... There's a prayer in the Bible that is amazing prayer for this situation mm -hmm. that will help you and just help you commit more to God and be in His Word. Yes. And it is in the book of Psalms 51, 1 through... Oh. So it's right after 50, the passage 51, that we just read. 1 through 2. Mm -hmm. And it's for repentance mm -hmm. and... Um, we have another prayer, or, um, more verses, but that's for commitment to help you work on this, work on this, and, mm -hmm. um. I'll get the, it for you while you talk. The prayer, no, the prayer's right here. It's 37, baby. 51 through, 1 through 2. Oh. And. Oh, yeah, the, the prayer of repentance. And. Think that's it. It says, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. And if you weren't at the last church service we had, um, compassion means um, mercy and love and care. It's um, just kindness. And it's loving someone, caring for someone. And... If you look at God, He always cares for us. Mm -hmm. But if you ask yourself this question that I'm about to say, why are we keep walking away from God when He shows so much compassion on us? Yes. Because God, if we just follow Him, we will walk in salvation of God. So we don't have to worry about failing. That we can just come to God and ask for forgiveness. Yes. And because we have, we've all had moments of forgetting God. Yes, and when you do go to Psalms thirty-seven one through seven, mm -hmm. which is commitment commitment to God. Yes. Um, you can see that it says, "Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong, for like grass they soon fade away, like spring flowers they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good." Then you will live safely in the in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him, and He will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord, and wait patiently for Him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Mm -hmm. And that's just saying, um, like, you commit to God and yeah. don't worry. And commit everything him. to the Lord and trust Him. Don't mm -hmm. worry about these wicked or don't, wor don't worry about being wicked or envy. Because when you, envious. when you, envy is... Um, because when you commit everything to, Lord, to the Lord, you can ask for forgiveness. And it says, trust in Him, and He will help. And it also says, where is it, where is it? Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Amen. And Take delight. You might be thinking, well, what's the heart's desires? Well, the heart's desires is probably coming out of wickedness, right? And... If you are struggling with this today, I recommend going into fifty one Psalms fifty one and one through two. But 
to re to repent. Uh, but thirty seven one, chapter thirty seven one through seven, is actually really good verses, and they they basically top off the code of conduct. Yeah, it's it almost like it. You wrap it up in a big bow with mm -hmm. Psalm thirty seven because it allows you to recommit. Mm -hmm. Almost like, let's, Lord, help me wipe my, my slate clean. Like David, this is David, mm -hmm. you know, because we know that um, the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. And we have Psalm 51 is the prayer of repentance. And so we saw where David repented. He had to make it right before God and repent when he mm -hmm. forgets God. He had to make it right and repent when he violates the code of conduct. As verse 23 in chapter 50 says, Whoever offers praises glorifies me, and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. If we want to continually see the salvation of God, we have to come into his course with praise and thanksgiving. Sorry, baby. You're okay. And... And allow him to um, autocorrect our conduct. Mm -hmm. Because if not, we are stuck in our own ways, our own thinking. And that is where the role of the Holy Spirit comes in and ministers to us to woo us to, hey, listen, you really violated God here. You really forgot God here. And you need to repent if you want to see the salvation of God, you have got to repent. And so it's, it's, I was telling Joshua yesterday, what a dreadful place to be in where it says, verse 22, Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces. And 21. And there be none to deliver you. I mean, that's God saying, you are doing this all by yourself and there's going to be none to save you. Do not forget God. Go ahead, baby. And 21, while you did all this, I remained silent. God remained silent. And you thought I didn't care. But now I will rebuke you, listing all my charges against you. Come on. That's basically what we're all, what, what, what we're talking about today. Because we were the ones that really didn't care. And... We were the ones that were against him. We were walking away from him. We were not remembering him in situations of hardship. Yeah. And when you are in hardship, you need to come to him and give yes. it to him. And don't take it out on people or people that you might not know. Or even if it is people, just bring it all to God. And this is where it leads to where you got to bring your hardship to God, but we're not talking about that today. So, mm -hmm. but when you go back to 37, 1 through 7, it's like, it, like you said, it's the bow. To, yeah, it's the yeah. icing on the cake. It's the big bow on our topic today. It's a big, beautiful, colorful bow that just wraps a gift all up and ready to give away. Because 30, Psalm 37, 1 is encouraging us to commit to him. To trust him. All right, let's just go to it just to just to recap. Commit, trust him, be still in his presence, and wait patiently for him not to worry. These are just um, encouragements for us as a believer. Listen, we have forgotten God. Mm -hmm. And I have lent my mouth to evil. I have slandered. I have behaved like the wicked. And and and, and the, I have not abided by the statues that um, Psalm 50 has said. And then we go into 51 and we repent. Like verse J Joshua mentioned chapter 51. We repent. We ask for mercy. And then 37, it's, a re it's an encouragement to just commit, trust, be in his presence, not to worry. And so we pray that, that, that you would remember not to forget God. Remember there's a code of conduct in God's eyes. He desires for us to have a conduct, a right conduct that's, that's managed correctly before his presence. We don't want to be walking like the wicked. We don't want to be behaving like the evil one. We want to be under the salvation of God. If we fall, if we fall, there's grace. 
He knows our hearts if we are intentional about our sin or he knows we're trying. And there's always grace, not the grace card to do whatever you want. The grace card or the grace and mercy when you genuinely fall and and God swoops you up and just loves on you and, and you ask for forgiveness and, and you move on. But the, go ahead. You want to say something? And I'm going to leave you with one last verse. Go ahead. We've had lots of verses today, but I'm going to leave you with one last verse. Trust, which is Psalms 37 37 verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. When you trust in him and when you don't turn around and walk away, you will prosper. You will Amen. live and live in the land of God and in the land of blessings and goodness. Yes. And when you do go through a hardship, you should always know that God is with you. Because when you're prospering and you don't have to like worry. And it even says in He's reading um, from Psalm thirty seven. And when it says in 37 verse 7, be still in the presence of the Lord and don't and, and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. So don't worry when it comes to a hardship. Don't worry when for us kids when you fail a test. Don't worry when um when you have when you lose a family member. member. Mm-hmm. Don't worry when you're um when you get sick don't worry when the devil comes in your ear and says that's okay to look at don't worry because you should always know that god is with you Mm -hmm. and in verse five commit everything you do to the lord trust him and he will help you commit everything you do commit commit time to the lord give time to the lord in 15 minutes of prayer um, in worship, in worship, everything you do, commit it to the Lord, give yes. it to the Lord and trust in him and he will help you. Amen. You don't have to worry because he will help you. Yes. Amen. I don't think there's anything else left to say. I think you made that pretty clear, baby. We pray that you're blessed today. In fact, I'm going to have Joshua close out with a word of prayer. Go ahead, Joshua. Dear Heavenly, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity that me and my mom can come and teach about your word god i pray that you will help anybody that watches this or just help everybody that watches this apply this word and apply this message to their life god i pray that like psalms 51 through 1 through 2 says that we will just just forgive us god and help us repent and not turn away from you god help us just Take this code of conduct and follow it and just help us commit everything we do to you, Lord. Yes. And you will help us and help us not to worry when we come in a hardship. Yes, in God. Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 And we're not going to forget God. We are not going to forget him. I pray that you're blessed. I pray that the word resonates in your heart. I pray that it helps you check your code of conduct. I pray that it encourages you to repent if you have fallen. There's no condemnation in God's presence. There is love and forgiveness and a place where there's genuine, genuine healing when you truly repent. God comes and swoops you up with a, with a balm of healing over your life. And, and he allows you to get back on the right path, as Psalm 37 said. So we know that there's hope for every person listening. You're never too far. You're never too gone where God's hand cannot reach you. So we pray that you're blessed today and um, share this video with somebody who needs to be encouraged. I think we, we live in a world with a lot of hurting people, um, a lot of hurting uh, even believers that need truth spoken into their lives. And um, I think getting a child's perspective who's so anointed to preach the word you can just really receive how God is ministering to you through a child come with a childlike mind of faith um, and receive the word of the Lord for yourself today and I believe many people need to hear this message Um, we pray that you're blessed until then we will be back here next Tuesday right here at noon 
and um, feel free to comment on there, tag us, um, and let us know that you were blessed. All right, guys, until then, we will see you guys here back here next Tuesday. Bye. Bye-bye.